Wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14. My name is Sean, I'm 15 years old and I recently arrived from two weeks of summer missions in Haiti. To be honest, I went to Haiti with ambitions, not of serving God, but of being spiritually renewed. I had gone to the retreat and had been emotionally renewed, and so I wanted that feeling again. Inside, I knew from the start I was selfish and immature in faith, a baby Christian. So I entered Haiti thinking missions was for myself, yet I left Haiti thinking missions was for God. So how did God speak through me? How did he touch me during the mission trip? He didn't, and that is what changed me. I started in Haiti with high hopes. I heard of different people coming to Haiti and being changed, having that one intimate moment with God, telling people that their lives have been touched forever. That's why even with the heat, the no electricity, the cold showers with cups, the limited sleep, the manual toilets, and my many accidents, I felt energized and ready to do my group's ministry, which was English. In the English ministry, we taught adults about grade four level English. For me, I felt as though I really just connected with each person I taught. Their eyes were filled with hope and enthusiasm as they learned the most simple things that we take for granted. We did not only teach them English, but we taught them the gospel message also. I believe now that God did work me, through me to touch the people there, especially on the last uh, days of teaching, where he gave me unthinkable ideas and boldness to teach them of God's message. Yet at the, at the moment in Haiti, I still couldn't feel God's presence emotionally. I still couldn't feel his plan, so what did he want to do with me? One of the worst days for me, and one of the best for other people, was Tent Evangelism Day, where I felt like a hypocrite telling people the four spiritual laws when I myself found it so hard to believe the first law, that God loves us and has a plan for us. So I asked myself, if he has a plan, why am I in Haiti? Why am I feeling absolutely nothing? I'm working, I worked like 100%, 110%, spiritually and physically hard, but why am I still not receiving the Holy Spirit? I felt so confused, hurt, and abandoned by God. I asked why God. I had the who's, what's, when's, and where's, but no why. It was from the encouragement of the team, the wise words of Pastor Lisa, and a flipping of the four spiritual laws manual that brought me to understanding. So basically, this is what the analogy that they use in the four spiritual laws is. Basically, there's a train, and this train is of our faith. And the first part of the train is what just like really moves the train. And then the second part is what connects with the first one. And that also, those two can't, uh, those two can't exist without, uh, the train can't move without those two. And then finally we have the third part, which is the last caboose, which just has a lot of material. And so basically this is what it says. It says the fact is the first part. Fact is most important and it is God and his word, which just truly pulls the train. And then we have faith, which is also connected to fact, which is our trust in God and His Word. And then we have feeling, the result of our faith and obedience. So basically what I thought was the caboose, they call it the caboose. You, the train can run with, that, with or without the caboose. However, it would be useless to attempt to pull the train by the caboose. In the same way, I should not depend on feelings or emotions, but place my faith in the trustworthiness of God and the promises of His Word. That is what I thought, and it just sort of made me think throughout the whole trip. I also remember distinctly Pastor Lisa telling us not to be discouraged because God takes time to grow in us and to renew us so that we are not one time or good weathered Christians with strong godly people. Looking back at the trip, I believe God was trying to send me a lesson. A lesson of patience, a lesson of faith, and a lesson of serving. So how was I changed? Not by the sur a suffering in Haiti, not by our suffering in Haiti but God's withdrawal of emotion, so that I could learn of true faith and of why I was there. As it says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. It clearly states not only the heart for emotion, but also mind for intellectually receiving Christ by faith and fact. So now I believe once again that God's timing is perfect, and as I share with you today, I can say without a shadow of doubt that God loves you, God loves me, and has a wonderful plan for you and I. This mission trip, I didn't have a specific event that changed me. I didn't lose my passport. I just like went along with it. And so I didn't really have that one moment. It was just the whole trip. It just motivated me to do things that I would never do before. And I truly believe that God worked in me as well. And so this mission trip motivated me to work harder in my spiritual life. And now all I ask of God is willpower and self-control to remain blameless in His eyes. 
I believe that this mission trip settled my faith. I'd like to sincerely thank you for your prayers, and I would encourage each and every one of you to go on missions next summer. Thank you. Was our one of our young is was our youngest person on the Haiti mission team. He just finished grade nine and he'll be going to grade ten. And so it goes to show that um, maturity of faith comes with um, just watching God work in your life, not necessary age. We have somebody also going to share today. His name is Simon, um, and I'm going to invite him up right now. Um, Simon was one of the older ones, not the oldest, but one of the older ones in our group, and um, he's got an awesome testimony too. So let's give him a. Pastor Lisa said, we all know that there are no limitations to spiritual maturity. 
I just want to thank all of my fellow friends that were on this trip and Pastor Lisa for being so open and accepting. I at first came to be served, but because of you guys and Pastor Lisa, I was able to realize that while we were serving the nation, we were also being served through Christ's blessing, and I saw it open the door to an amazing start in my spiritual life. Thank you. think about the way that God works in individual lives, I think it really blows us away because it's inconceivable how God just simply reaches inside your life and your heart and turns it upside down and helps you see what was so obvious um, that you just never noticed before. This is our God, and this is God that we worship on a Sunday. This is the God that we go out and say we will go to the ends of the earth, and there's nothing like actually going out to the ends of the earth. Amen? Okay, I'm not convinced. Amen? Amen. All right, we're going to get to our word, but let's just um, wrap up this testimony time with a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you, Lord, because you are so good. And whether whatever walk of life we are at, and no matter what situation we are in, we have one Lord, one God, one baptism, one faith, one spirit, and one God who is over all and in all. Father, we just pray, Lord, that you... Bless the work that you have done in Haiti and the works that you are continuing to do inside all of our students. We pray, Lord, that you'd raise them up to be strong and mighty, that you'd show each and every single one of them how great it is to be humble before you and how courageous it is to go out and be obedient to your calling. Father, I pray, Lord, that as we dive into your word, that you'd open up minds and open up hearts. I pray, Lord, that as we share in the communion meal today, that you remind us of the sacrifice of your son. I pray, Lord, that every single one of us would commit to you and you would continue that good work that you've begun because you are a good God and you keep your promises. We praise you, Lord, for the things that you are doing right now, for the things that you have done, for the things that you will do. And our lives are yours. We are your living sacrifice. Use us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.